on YouTube, so it's going to be a quick video basically explaining my labor and delivery. Um, I'm just going to try and make this as quick as possible so it's not a long video. Um, in December, I was 25 weeks and my doctor had saw that I had some signs of preeclampsia or preeclampsia, however you would say it. So, he basically told me that I had to go to the or I had to be admitted. So he admitted me. I stayed at that hospital that I was in deliver at for two days. Then he decided he was going to that I had to again. Mm -hmm. He decided that he was gonna admit me to a different hospital. So I went to a different hospital and I was told I was gonna be delivered delivering that day. So I knew that my baby was going to come out premature and I had thought I was going to deliver. I think it was December 12th. Anyways, they told me I was going to deliver that day. So when I got to the other hospital, they told me that they were going to try something else. They were going to put me on blood pressure medicine to see if they could bring my blood pressure down. And if you don't know what preeclampsia is, I can't really explain it because I'm still trying to learn it myself. I just know the symptoms are high blood pressure and the protein in urine. And my protein in my urine was like 19,000 or something like that. I don't remember. I stayed at the other hospital that my doctor admitted me to for 31 days. I delivered January 8th, and yes, I spent Christmas and New Year's in the hospital, and it sucked really bad. Um, I did have a couple times, a couple times in the hospital, I did have a couple of spikes in my blood pressure where I thought I was going to deliver, and I've had doctors come into my room and tell me that you're going to deliver today, and it never happened. So... January 8th, I was waking, I was, the night before I had my blood pressure really, really high. And I can't really remember what it was, but they gave me four doses of medication through my IV. And I had an IV in for the whole time I was there. I was on magnesium, and then I was on and off antibiotics and stuff like that. And... The whole time I was there, I had taken a blood pressure medicine, which was labetalol. I took that, and that helped a little bit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't completely, like, helpful at all. So, um, after I've been taking labetalol, there were a couple times where I had to get blood pressure medicine through my IV. And I can't really remember what that was. But January 7th, the night before, I was told I was going to with the baby. I um, was having non-stop high blood pressure. It would not go down at all. Not even with the medications they were giving me. Um, and also they were saying that the heart rate was dropping in the baby so they weren't going to do anything about it that night. They were going to check the baby overnight and monitor me and everything. I stayed in the labor and delivery for 31 days. Or not 31 days, it was like about 27, something like that. <laughs> January 8th came around in the morning. I was really, really sick the night before too. Uh, they made me have an ultrasound the night before I delivered just to see if the baby was okay and to see if the fluid was good. And I didn't hear anything back on that one. But I did get an ultrasound the whole time I was in the hospital. I did get an ultrasound, like, every other day. Um, the last time I had an anatomy ultrasound, they told me my baby was going to weigh 2 pounds and 11 ounces. And that scared me, because I didn't think that a baby coming out would be 2 pounds and 11 ounces. I did have 4 doses of the steroid shots to make his lungs mature. So, they said he shouldn't have any breathing problems when he came out. Anyways, January 8th came around, and 
it was around 7 o'clock in the morning and the nurse comes in saying you're going to go in for a, c a cesarean uh, c-section as most people know it and I was just like oh great maybe this is a real thing so the nurse was like okay I'm going to prep you make the phone calls you need to make and we're going to go ahead and deliver the baby today at the time my boyfriend wasn't there with me um, he did stay with me most of the time I was in the hospital, but that two, the two days that I was the worst, he decided he was going to go and leave to go to school, to finish up his schoolwork, and little did he know I was going to give the baby, give birth to the baby when he wasn't there. Um, so they took me in, I got the spinal thing. Um, I thought it was going to hurt, but it really didn't. Um, <coughs> the anesthesiologist, I'm going to admit, I did cry like a baby before the cesarean and during. I didn't feel anything at all. Um, apparently what the nurse had said when she came in that morning to tell me I was going to have a c-section, that I was contracting. And I didn't feel like I was contracting at all. Um, they basically told me that that's normal, and my sister had told me that's normal, and she has had five kids, so, yeah. Um, around 8.15, 8 o'clock, 8.15, they took me into the OR, where they prepped me, and I got my spinal, like I said, and I should write this down, because now I'm, like, all over the place, and I'm really sorry. Um, I got my spinal, and everybody came into the room. I didn't see anybody from the NICU there yet, but they did call somebody from the NICU. And I was 30 weeks when I delivered. Like 30 weeks and 4 days. <coughs> 30 weeks and 4 days. And they are really surprised that I even lasted that long. Because they really thought I was going to deliver earlier than 30 weeks. Um, all I can remember before they put me out because they were gonna the anesthesiologist said he was gonna put me to sleep afterwards so after that they basically all I heard was I felt the pressure of them pulling him out and then I remember them saying nine o'clock like on the dot nine o'clock and then I woke up in the recovery room and it was around like 10 15 no not 10 15 what am I saying like 9.30 maybe, 9.30, 9.45, something like that. And then uh, my boyfriend arrives and he's just like, okay, let's do this. And I remember telling him, dude, it's already over. <laughs> um, I didn't get to see him for two days after I delivered because I was still on antibiotics. I was under isolation for some reason. I don't know what it was for, but I was under isolation. And they, uh, I just wasn't allowed to see him. I had to recover still. I had, I'm trying to think what else happened to that. The first day after I got out of surgery, they didn't do anything. They didn't let me get out of bed until 7 o'clock the other like seven o'clock at night the next day and that's when I got out of bed and it was the worst pain ever that had to be the first time I felt pain at all because that was just horrible pain and I think what hurt the most was just getting out of bed and getting out of a chair um after the first time though it was so much easier like the next day I was able to get out of the bed by myself I didn't have to call a nurse or anything um I ended up staying later than usual because of my blood pressure was still high and I wasn't expecting it to go down or anything so I had to stay a few more days. On the third day they finally let me go see the baby and I was so relieved to finally see him and it was really heartbreaking to see him with the tube in his nose and the tube down his throat because he wasn't able to feed yet because they usually don't start feeding bottle feeding until 34 weeks 
so that's when I like broke down. They said when he came out that he did he did manage to um what was I gonna say? He managed to like they had the tubes in his nose, just giving him oxygen, ventilator, whatever it's called. They did that and he was breathing really good for being born at thirty weeks and being two pounds eleven ounces. So after I found out to go see him, they told me that he had hands on time and he was still in his own incubator and everything, so and they did it every four hours, so it was every four hours. Yeah. It was at it was every three hours. I'm not sure. But they do hands on time, so every time at least during the day I would try like eight o'clock in the morning, noon, four, I would try to go spend some time with him. They wouldn't let me hold him though until the first time I wanted to go with it. Which made me very upset because I really wanted to hold him. Um I would have to say the worst pain out of everything that I felt was definitely getting out of bed the next day or when they make you get out of bed um when they make you get out of bed it's the nurse I had was very grumpy she didn't want to help me out of bed at all so I had to try and do it myself um it was just too painful and my incision wasn't really that big I only had 20 staples um and it was right across my left hip so well a little bit above my left hip kind of he um the doctor came in to visit me in the recovery room and they said the surgery was good he's in the NICU as of now um we're gonna move to your postpartum room so they moved me to the postpartum room which lucky for me was right across there right down the hall was the NICU, so I didn't have to go too far to go see him. When I was able to go see him, my mom came to visit me. My mom and my brother and my sister came to see me that night. Um, after I had the baby, they went to go see the baby. When I came home, I think that was the hardest. Coming home and not having my baby is like, oh my god. 